Iowa looking for the third consecutive Big Ten title taking on Nebraska. What a scene. This was Iowa fans take over whatever building they're in. Caitlin Clark, rare struggle from deep. 0 for 6 in the first quarter and the second with Nebraska leading the all-time leading score. That's as cold as it gets. 0 for 9 on threes, the most misses without a make in her career. Nebraska, Jazz Shelley. High arcing three splashes in Nebraska up 11. It's tied for the largest halftime deficit Iowa's faced this year. Shooters shoot. Caitlin's light always green. Under a minute to go in the third. Iowa now down two. Up one. Two of three from three in the third. All the dozen points came in the quarter. The fans loving that. But Nebraska's up. Alexis Markowski there. Puts Nebraska up six. It's Clark. Step back again. Iowa's not going to go away. Clark. Cape Martin. Corner three. Iowa within a two. Under 40 to go. Clark spins, hangs, hits. We're tied at 77. One of the and one didn't get it. Closing seconds of the game. Nebraska with an opportunity to win it. It's all you can ask for. Ball in your hands. You don't have to dodge a Clark shot. Can you get the win? They had a decent look. Logan Nisley cannot hit. Put five more minutes on the clock. It was great in the overtime. Two minutes to go. Iowa down two. Martin all alone. Can't let her have it. It rolls around and in. Iowa up one. Nebraska down two. Nisley, good look. Big time hit. Nebraska's up one. Clark. Step back. You know what it is. She's got 30 in the second half and in overtime. The next Nebraska possession. There's Clark. Like a safety in the secondary. Gets the steal. Nebraska fouls. Clark makes a couple of free throws. A block there. Gabby Marshall, Nisley. Clark goes for 34, 12 and 7, the third consecutive Big Ten title tie for the longest streak in conference history. Who you want to hear from? You know, those are the moments you live for. Uh, our fans, you know, they were incredible. They kind of willed us to this victory. They never gave up on us. And if this is my last time playing in a Big Ten game between two Big Ten teams, then what better way to end it all? I mean, you know, you have the overtime. You have the we fight back, bad shooting, good shooting, defensive stops. It just really had it all on the biggest stage and can't be happier for our group. And, you know, this was the only way we could end it. It never gets old cutting any net. Um, you know, I feel like we're we're pretty good at that now. And, you know, hopefully we get to do it a few more times here coming up in, in late March. Best players in sports, whatever sport they play, bring their best when it's required. Clark, 30 of the 34 in the second half in overtime. She had more threes in the second half than she had points in the first. And all of that helped turn that double-digit halftime deficit into more nets around necks and more championship hardware for Iowa. And Tim Legler's got a smile on his face because <laughs> so often we've talked this year about the NBA and you're the best there is talking about basketball and you say your favorite player is Caitlin Clark and I finally said in our show meeting I said why don't we have Blake's talk about <laughs> his favorite player. I was and, stoked when and, you asked well, me that question. Here's what I want to know. Yeah. Like we all can watch her shoot mm -hmm. the ball. You made your living as a shooter. What is it that she does that you just shake your head, you marvel at, and appreciate? I think if I – and I thought about this question. If I had to sum it up to one thing, it's the fact that she makes extraordinarily important moments look very easy. Mm. Uh, that And that's that's a special quality. But that's true greatness when mm. you're able to operate with that kind of pressure on you and do some of the things she does. And this was working a second ago, but have that soundboard queued up if this goes off the rails. Right, get ready. All right, here we go. So yeah, there's basically four ways she affects the game. Scott, really off, off the dribble shooting, off the catch shooting, off the drive, and then with her passing. Here's the first one now. This is off of the catch with the shooting. She comes from the out of bounds here. She inbounds the basketball. She doesn't do this a lot where she comes out to get these dribble hands off, off the out of bounds, play directly into a shot, but that's what she does right here. The reason I think this is so special to me, look at the defender. You're coming up on the shooting side of her body. 
the hand is extended, which means that Caitlin Clark's shooting motion is going to have to travel straight through this plane. You can't defend this any better. You're right there on her right hip. Hand is out where she's got to raise the basketball, and yet she is still able to go up, not only shoot it, Scott, I talk about this all the time. Look at her balance on the shot. So she caught this ball out to the three-point line on the move with the defender with a hand in her face. She's drifting fully left, which makes it really difficult to shoot this straight and accurately. No, it doesn't. It's nothing but twine. <laughs> yeah. All right, here, this one I love because this is a very important play in the game to emphasize that. They're down five. Under two to go. 45 to go. This is the best player in the country. There aren't very many people that would ever think about making this pass, but she does it. You know, you got a, you got a teammate here, Stolke, who I really have loved watching play. And she's running. She's got great hands. But here's the thing that I think Caitlin Clark is looking at. She's doing the calculus on this. She is looking dead at this defender because she wants to know if she's going to get there in time as this pass is thrown over the top because there are a lot of places she can put this where this is going to be a turnover. She's going to throw this ahead, and she's already figuring that she can put it in a place where only Stolke can catch it. This ball is thrown perfectly to her lead hand against a smaller defender who can't get there in time, who runs by, and then Stolke's able to gather her feet two steps here under the rim and deliver it. I can't even begin to explain the nerve it took to throw that pass in that situation. And then this last one, and this is her signature. But I want to show you this, Scott, first. She's got both feet right here inside the top of the key. And her three step back is a little bit different because she literally generates straight back away from the rim. Most people go sidestep. Curry, Luca, their best shot is going to the side. She goes straight back against the defender. And again, you think this is an important moment in the game? They're down by one inside of a minute. And she goes to this shot off the dribble, and it's defended really well. You can't defend that any better than that. Shoot the basketball with a hand in your face as accurately she does in those kind of moments. That's what separates her to me historically and why she's become, for me, must-see. I'm going to see all of Caitlin Clark's games the rest of her career. Sports evolve. That's what they do. But what we're seeing, I guess, is – and we see so many shot makers across the sport, men's and women's game. But for you, if you didn't land where you took off, yep. like what was your percentage? Yeah, it's going to drop. Look, oh, great shooters can fade, obviously. You have to. In the NBA, there's times you got to lean back. But what about fade. side to side? And that's difficult and not as frequently as she does. And from three. That's the thing. And like I was talking earlier, Steph Curry's going to take some of them deep 30-foot bombs, you mm -hmm. know, one or two a game when he has to a lot of times. This is four a half for her, which she's pulling up from those distances. It's just be, become part of like what her game is, and it's, it's unguardable. You know, the places that she does it from. But I was so impressed today with the fact that Nebraska could not have played a better game. Mm. Iowa looked like they had lost the game several times, and every time they had to have something on a particular possession, she delivered it, whether it was a drive, a three, or a pass. That's the key. It, it took their best from the best to beat a Nebraska team. So tip our cap to them yeah. because they played a brilliant game, but not enough to beat uh, that team and that player. Love, love what you did, and hey, What's your budget on this show? Huh? <laughs> it worked. That's right. Right? It's beautiful when it works. Right? How about that? Tim Legler, everybody. <laughs>